Ladies and gentlemen, greetings. This is prosthodontics on Friday, which explains implant prosthodontic steps and its side effects in a very easy and interesting way. The prosthodontics on Friday in November starts off with clinical application of implant overdenture using locator attachment. The lecture is going to be provided by Dr. Kim Se-young of 22nd Century Seoul Dental Clinic. Greetings. Thank you for appearing on prosthodontics on Friday. Before we begin, could you provide a brief explanation? When we provide clinical treatment, there are elements that we need to be aware of in each stage. And today, rather than theory, I'd like to talk about the clinical process looking at the video clips. It sounds very interesting. I look forward to your lecture. To those viewing the program via the dental site, you can participate in communication using the chat screen on the right. Feel free to leave your questions and these will be addressed during the Q&A session. For those of you whose questions have been selected, Starbucks coffee coupon will be delivered. There is a special event for prosthodontics on Friday viewers today. Once a pop-up appears while you watch the live program, click on it and you'll be able to win Starbucks coffee as well as desserts. You need to log in to participate in the event and the longer you watch, your chances of winning increases. I hope you show a lot of interest and let us begin Dr. Kim Se-ung's lecture. Stay tuned. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Seung. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude for inviting me to prosthodontics on Friday. Thank you, Professor Cho. And I would like to express my gratitude towards all of you who are watching this program, even though it's quite late. And I hear that there's a special event today, of course, because you're so popular, we have prepared a special event. At times, we come across fully dentalist patient. In other times, we have to remove all teeth and patients become fully dentalist. We need to come up with a treatment plan for these patients. There are different options, but we can think largely of three. We can provide complete denture or place a couple of implants to provide removable prosthesis like overdenture. We can place multiple implants and provide a fixed prosthesis. When I first started to provide clinical treatment, what's most difficult for me was coming up with a treatment plan. I found it hard to come up with optimum treatment plan for the patient. You need to consider multiple factors to come up with an ideal treatment plan. In the past, I thought that providing multiple options for the patient was the good thing to do. However, looking back, I think that was a bad choice. Considering different conditions that the patient is in, the appropriate treatment plan is only one or two for each patient. As I provided treatment, what troubled me was that the patients that received treatment by me returned and that is the maintenance problem and when you come up with a treatment plan you need to consider the problems related to maintenance you need to factor these issues to come up with the appropriate treatment plan in the case of lower we can provide implant over denture using two implants in the case of older patients 
The implant over denture using two implant is known to be very effective. In the case of lower compared with upper, there's a lot of alveolar bone loss. In this case, if we use complete denture, as you all know, peripheral sealing is difficult to achieve. For these patients, we can provide over dentures. There can be single standing over denture or bar over denture where implants are connected. Over denture is applied more to the lower compared with upper. In the case of very old fully edentulous patient, it is known from 2002 report that the first treatment of choice is complete denture in the upper and over denture using two implants in the lower. What I want to mention briefly is implant placement position. We have learned the theoretics. We need to place the implant anteriorly parallel to the line connecting both condyles. And this is because overdenture using two implants is generally tissue supported overdenture. So tissue movement should be allowed. If you place implant asymmetrically, resistance is made against the different movements. The position of the implant placement should differ depending on the shape of the arch. Arch shape can be divided into V shape, U shape, and oval shape. And when we assume that the arch is V shape and we place the implant in the canine area, when we connect the two, regardless of whether it is solitary type or bar type, actually in the case of solitary type, virtual fulcrum line uh, is formed and the anterior cantilever becomes elongated. Therefore, you need to place the implant in a different position. Doctor, it was in your slide and you talked about the canine. In the case of V shape, you mentioned that it is better to place it in the lateral incisor. In general, dentists prefer to place it in the canine because there's oval type or square type rather than V shape. In the canine area, is there a reason why dentists prefer this area? As you all know, canine has a very long root and it lasts long within oral cavity and therefore there's more of an alveolar bone. And there are many reasons why it's a good area for implant placement. When I taught in college, I brought in students in their third year in dental school and did perio tests from tooth number one to seven. Both in the upper and lower, and the result was that the PT weight perio test value was the best in canine. When we just think about it, canine is a single root tooth. On the other hand, number four and number six, there are three roots. How come canine has better results? Canine, yes, has longer root. However, we came to the conclusion was that canine had better uh, bone quality. Canine is in the corner and because it's under a lot of force, it became naturally stronger. That was the conclusion. You need to place in the canine to be able to put the clips on the bar type. I'm sure bar type is going to be addressed by another lecturer and that is why I believe a lot of dentists prefer the canine. Thank you for answering your question. Please carry on. If the arch shape is U shape, the position is not really important, but canine area is preferred. In the case of V shape, if you place it in the canine area, anterior cantilever becomes elongated. You need to place it mesial to the canine. As Professor Cho has mentioned, when we choose bar type, a lot of people use clip. And for appropriate maintenance of the clip, horizontal space is required. If you look at the slide, 13 millimeter of clip length is required for maintenance, 12 or 13 millimeter. If you place it too close, because there's where bar comes in, so it becomes shorter and maintenance 
power goes down. You need to consider what kind of attachment you're going to use considering these factors and choose the implant position. At times, four implants are replaced for overdenture. Overdenture using three implants. I don't think this is placed intentionally. Maybe the dentist placed a four, but one failed. There are cases where people place four these days. It's not really done this way because even dentists are divided over implant overdenture. Some people did test it. The process is too complicated and it's uncomfortable and maintenance wise, it's not very good. The so-called all on X, you place a couple of implants and do a cantilever ponic. There are people who provide these kind of prosthesis. However, personally, I don't like this type placing about six implants and providing hybrid type prosthesis because when you do follow up check, there are so many maintenance problem. It's very difficult. I believe it is better to do overdenture or provide fixed prosthesis. I'm sure you've experienced a lot of these. Yes, fractures and dislocations. This is a problem. In doing fixed prosthesis for the lower, and before we go into it, we can provide this kind of design using a few implants to provide fixed prosthesis in the anterior surveyed crown and in the posterior you can provide RPD. I've talked about multiple treatment options. In order to provide fixed implant prosthesis in the lower, the minimum implant that is required is six. At times, so if inevitable, we can provide one piece abutment, but in terms of maintenance, it is better to provide them in three pieces. When we place the six implants from the anterior up to the first molar, prosthesis can be provided like this. So I prefer this. These options become available. When you do bridge, for placement, I think you should increase the diameter of the implant. When we do overdenture, we need to consider the types of attachment. There are so many attachments available in the market and some are not even on the list. When we classify them, it can be divided as single type, in other words, the solitary type or the bar type attachment where implants are connected. It can be divided into two like this. What I want to mention is that when you choose these attachments, I think you should not choose attachment based on your preference or someone's recommendation. You need to choose attachments following different factors. And that is the best. Most clinicians don't like this kind of bar type because first, it is very difficult in terms of clinical and lab process and treatment period is long and there is a lot of fabrication cost and bar type requires a lot of space so a lot of clinicians don't really like it as shown a lot of space is required on the other hand implant over denture using solitary or a single standing the lab and clinical process is comparatively simple and treatment period is short and the fabrication cost is low you can choose like this. When I determine the type of attachment that I'm going to use for the treatment, there are multiple factors that I consider, but I want to emphasize one. The experience of a dentist is very important, but more so than that is the level of alveolar bone resorption. There can be mild, moderate, severe alveolar bone resorption. In the case where there is a severe alveolar bone resorption, if you choose solitary type just because it has a simpler lab and clinical process, then you cannot give horizontal stability on the denture. 
that functions. During function, it moves sideways, and this leads to abrasion and deformation of the attachment, as well as wear. And this occurs significantly, it moves like this. I believe there should be considerable amount of alveolar bone to apply this. The reason why we use the bar type is to create an artificial alveolar ridge. That's the way you should approach it. By doing this, you can get horizontal stability of the final denture. Therefore, personally, when I come across a patient with a severely resorbed mandibular bone, when I do overdenture, even if it is complicated, I choose the bar type. If there is mild or moderate level of alveolar bone resorption in the anterior area, there is a bit of bone. And therefore, when we apply attachment, you can provide horizontal stability on the full denture. In those cases, I use solitary type attachments. Fortunately, the locator attachment that will be addressed today, compared with other types of attachment, the vertical space necessary is comparatively small, and therefore, even if there is only limited amount of ridge, when we make a denture, we can prevent denture-based resin becoming too thin or interfering with other artificial teeth. I've talked about the theory in brief, and let's look at the case to review process. This was an older male patient. The final treatment plan was to provide a complete denture in the upper, and in the case of lower, the denture used, it was too rocky and the patient was not able to use it. And therefore, I plan for implant over denture using two implants. If you look at the alveolar bone, there's a little bit of resorption in the posterior area, but there's a considerable amount in the anterior area. So I decided to use locator abutment. This is the x-ray. I'm going to skip the surgical process. Canine area was chosen for implant placement because this is not a tapered arch and it is slightly U-shaped. In the upper, I used a traditional method for taking impression and when you take impression in the lower, you need to choose appropriate locator attachment first. GH, gingival height, needs to be selected appropriately. Following implant placement depth and gingival thickness, you need to choose the correct one. You can use locator core tool to attach the locator attachment to implant body. When you buy the locator core tool, it comes in one piece. If you unscrew, you can see that it is divided into three pieces. The first part is used to connect the locator attachment to the implant. If you take a closer look, on one side, it is designed to engage the locator. On the screen, you can see how it is designed. On the other side, there is a hole for the hex driver to go in. Choose the appropriate locator attachment and using the first piece, you can connect it with your hand. You can see the video. It is not fully binded, therefore, when you move it to oral cavity, you need to be careful so that it does not fall off. You need to connect using your hand first, and after that, when you give torque value, I've mentioned earlier that there's hex hole on the other side. You need to connect the hex driver to that hole and tighten by 30 Newton centimeters. In my case, I tend to do retightening after waiting about 5 minutes. I do retightening and then progress. Apart from locator core tool, there is a dedicated torque driver for locator from Austin. You can use these, but in order to use these, you need to pay additional money. And you can tighten sufficiently using the first part of the locator core tool. What is the appropriate GH for locator attachment? 
The locator attachment is connected to the implant. Nylon mail provides the retentive force, and this is within the processing cap over there. And it is connected via the snap-on method. The denture base is in contact with processing cap. In this case, I used the locator and Austin has TS port, which is the same as this locator, and I tried this. Thank you for using Austin TS port. What is your impression compared with the locator? What are your thoughts? Honestly speaking, I've only used a TS port in three cases and the longest follow-up was only three years. I didn't experience any problems up until now. I believe nylon mail does not have any problem. However, I do concern about the durability of locator attachment because it has only been three years. What I want to say is that in general, when there's a problem, it's because it has been applied wrong by the clinicians rather than an inherent problem with the product. I believe the product is pretty much problem-free. Good. Please carry on. In the case of TS port, this is applied to TS implant. There is mini size and regular size in diameter. So you can assume that there will be difference in connection area. However, if you look at this image, the dimension of the area where nylon mail goes in is the same. So you can use a 3.7 diameter component. Appropriate GH is very important. The processing cap is attached to the inner surface of denture and within that nylon mail goes in. The attachment goes in like this. You should not pressure the gingiva, at least for this area where it is in contact with the processing cap. It should be slightly superior to the gingiva to avoid the gingival irritation. If it is too deep, it is rickety and the patients experience pain. And if you make the GH too long, then it interferes with denture and base resin and the space for artificial teeth and at times perforation occurs like this. And therefore, appropriate GH should be chosen in line with implant placement depth and the gingival thickness. The reason why I talk about it this is because you look for a prosthetic component in search of solution. Because you have placed it too deep, the Austin TS port GH color, the longest one is 5 millimeter. but if you place it deeper than that, you have no options. You need to understand product specifications ahead, and then determine the depths of the implant placement. Personally, I think you should avoid using 1 millimeter GH. People talk about the necessity to place bone level implant deeply. Another topic I want to address is the impression component for locator attachment. You connect the appropriate locator and connect impression coping, take impression and connect analog and create the master model. You can take impression like this. Let's look at the video clip. First, appropriate locator is connected, and after that, that is impression coping dedicated for locator attachment. There is the black nylon mail. You can connect it easily because it's a snap-on. When you take impression, impression coping pickup is going to be done. It's the same for the superior part of the locator and if you put the analog within the impression material like this. Once you fabricate the master model, it's gonna be like this, right? 
And then you connect the processing cap on the analog model and work on your denture. What kind of benefit does this process have? In the lab process, so because you do it in the lab, the chair time will be reduced. This is how it's being introduced by the vendor. But tissue supported over denture, I don't have the lab attach it. Me too. Rather than have the lab make everything, the lab provides the denture and does the preparation work. And when you attach it within the patient mouth, the compatibility is the best because there's a lot of tissue support. I utterly agree with Professor Joe. Most people do it with an oral cavity. It's very rare to have it be done at the lab. If you look at the catalog of a vendor, it is introduced like this. Yet, personally, I don't do it like this. To give you a tip, once you buy the appropriate locator, it comes like this. If you buy ATS port and connect it, the processing cap within it, there is the black nylon male or the processing male, and you position it using this. Once you take impression, Bite registration will be reflected on the stone die. And then when you process it on the denture, you block out this area. When you attach the processing cap in oral cavity, you block out this space where different materials can go in and then proceed with denture process. If you do this, it will be easier to attach it within the oral cavity. Using general recording base wax rim, take VD and horizontal jaw relationship using the traditional method. Once master model is mounted, then you must align the artificial teeth. You don't complete it at this stage. You need to consider taking impression and the position of the artificial teeth at midline, and these need to be factored in. And try in the wax denture to do evaluation. Sometimes some people design metal framework. What I want to recommend is that if you cover the area of processing cap and the metal framework, then there's no benefit to it. You need to form it in the shape of crisscross. And this is going to be explained in detail later as to why it is important. Remember to try in the denture and evaluate various factors. After that, you use the general method to process the denture. Once the denture is brought to the clinic, you evaluate the denture and try in. Moving on, because of multiple errors, if it is impossible to adjust occlusion with an oral cavity, then we can do clinical remounting. You can use wax denture to avoid such a situation. This is highly recommended because once complete, it is very difficult to turn back. When you do it, you'll be able to get satisfactory result, like a good fit of the denture. As mentioned earlier, you attach processing cap to the inner surface. We use a white silicone rubber ring during this process. In order to prevent the residual resin from flowing into the processing cap, because once it's in, it is locked in there, the rubber ring is used for block out. How did you block the resin out when these were not available? The primary purpose is to prevent it from going in. And then you can see that it is coming out there. There is a bit of space. And I believe this also gives leg room in terms of vertical movement. Because there is a strong tissue support, it sort of rocks back and forth. If you make it fit, it is concentrated on the implant and it moves together. And at times we call that space. Thank you for the wonderful insight. Thank you.
Before attachment, the video clip has passed by. I have connected the processing cap. Look over here. Processing cap has been connected when impression was taken and during processing the denture, the processing cap can be in contact with the inner surface of the denture. If you look at the try-in, at times so when it is in contact, it feels rickety and rocky because the fulcrum hits first. In those cases, you need to understand where it is in contact. You can use a fit checker to check this. I'm going to adjust the video clip. It rocks. Fit checker is used to evaluate where it is in contact. If you look over here, it comes out like this. It looks okay. But if you look over there, it's in contact. So I had to remove it. I reposition it. And you can see that it is like this. This is because it is in contact with the inner surface of the denture. You can do it like that or another or method is to use indelible pencil. You use the pencil on top of the metal cap and blow some wind and you can see that a bit remains. If you put it on the denture, the area of contact is shown. You can use the indelible pencil as well. I believe it was a great choice to come here. I'm learning so many from here. The processing cap was in contact with a metal framework and it was adjusted and passive fit was gained. This is important to attach the processing cap. When you attach the processing cap on the inner surface of the denture, is it good to form a vent hull or escape hull on the outside surface of the denture? When I studied, I learned to create the hole, but personally, if you do it like this and do follow up the area, this area, this resin, this color, saying, and micro gap is formed adjacently, and food impaction it can occur. I don't really prefer this. To give you a tip, when you apply resin, don't apply too much, just to put in about half. Before that, I apply Vaseline on the outside of the denture and not the inside. And if you apply it, it flows in very thin. If you don't use Vaseline, when you use denture burr to remove the excessive resin, you will become unsure whether resin is being removed or the denture base is being removed. Therefore, I do it like this. I use round-shaped denture burr to trim out the excessive resin around the hole. And this is a very important tip. At times, there can be an area where it's insufficient because we don't use a whole lot. In that case, you can use a micro brush to adjust it. That is correct. I'm sure you already do it like this. If there's air bubble, you can use micro brush and then position the denture. If you rush, there can be bubbles. If you look at the processing cap, there's undercut. When you attach it, there's no major problem if there's no air bubble. However, if there is bubble or saliva, the nylon male is quite strong. And when the patient continues to use it, it can be removed like this. I've experienced this problem twice. I wondered what I was doing wrong. Was the resin that I was using problematic? I was perplexed. It comes out like this. And since then, if you look at the denture, I thought long and hard and I decided that the whole base should be wider than the upper portion. And I used a round burr to create what is almost like an undercut. Yes, undercut for mechanical locking. 
As I mentioned earlier, when you design the metal framework, if the metal framework covers the processing cap, then you cannot get the chemical binding and it is very difficult to, to adjust the metal framework. Therefore, you should do it crisscross way and create undercut. And once attached, it doesn't fall out. And since then, I was able to avoid such problem. It's a great idea. If you look over here, it looks crisscross here. Ronve is used to create undercut, almost like digging a hole. If you apply too much force, you might punch a hole, so be careful. After that, I use rebase resin to cement the processing cap on the inner surface of the denture. You use Rebase, and I also use Rebase. It comes in different names depending on the vendor. Some people use direct resin and pattern resin and resin cement. What do you think about that? I think you should use what is most comfortable to you. Personally, the pattern resin is too red and resin cement is a bit expensive and is technique sensitive and therefore I use base resin. So I want to ask you a question. When I studied, you talked about four theories and experiments. Could you please provide a little bit of explanation here? Direct pink resin is also useful. However, the binding force is the strongest in resin cement. You can come across people who use resin cement frequently. I think Dr. Park Jong-hyun in Seosan also uses resin cement. I've watched his online lecture briefly and I think he uses it, yes. When you use rebase resin, I gave you a tip providing undercut. You can prevent it from falling out. After you cement it, what are you going to do? Are you going to press it with your hands or are you going to have the patient bite? I'm sure you will be torn between the two options. Personally, I recommend you to press it with your own hands. If you're too busy and if you want to have the patient bite, then have the patient bite on the cotton roll. Because when you create denture, there can be deformations and therefore to increase the biocompatibility, have the patient bite on the cotton roll. When you remove the resin, once it hardens, at times the white silicone ring comes out together or it remains within the oral cavity. You remove that as shown in the video clip using the round burr. I've shown you illustration about it. And then you trim the surrounding. Once you wipe it using the gauze, because Vaseline has been applied here, you can remove resin very easily. At times, there can be air bubbles and additional adjustment may be required extra orally. After you do that, you need to position it within the oral cavity once again and let it harden because if you let it set uh, extra orally, it may cause problems with insertion. Air bubble is addressed like this. I want to emphasize once again that metal processing cap should not be in contact with the inner surface of denture. This occurs very frequently and that is why I included in this slide once more. The indelible pencil is very useful as Professor Chu has mentioned. Undercut should be formed. Use Vaseline and that is my clinical tip. Let's look again. This is the same process we remove. Because the color is the same, you don't really know what is the excessive resin and you trim the surrounding slightly. Trimming.
As you can see, it is removed very easily, yes. If we use denture burr for removing excessive resin at times, the denture-based resin can be affected as well, so using Vaseline is a very good way. If we are not careful, denture burr can remove denture-based resin as well. What is most important is that you should not apply Vaseline inside of the hole, just outside of the hole. Now you can see that it is now clean. The black nylon male is now being removed. The middle part of the locator core tool, you can use the middle one to remove it very easily. As you remove it, if it's stuck, you can remove it using the back portion as shown in the video. If you are fully aware of how to use the core tool, you can use it very easily. The nylon male used clinically, it's mostly blue. You can use the second tool to push it in and the sound of a snap can be heard as it is positioned. Based on my experience in the beginning, the locator has a very strong retentive force. Yes, you cannot pull it out even if you wanted to, in a lot of cases. The retentive force differs depending on color. Which do you use first? Do you use the weakest one so that the patient can take it in and take it out easily? Or the middle one? Very nice question. This is the same with TS port. The retentive force differs depending on color. If you look at the locator, the black is 400 gram force, blue is 700, pink 1300, white is 2300. There is stark difference. Even with black, the patients are very satisfied, right? The companies say that you can use it for two to three months and I don't use a very strong one from the first. I have the patient use the black one for some time and then move on to the blue. Personally, I've never used the white. I have used once or twice and it's really strong. What should be removable prosthesis turns into fixed. One time the patient came in because the patient was unable to remove it for a week. The patient used the pink. Even if you try to remove it, yes, you and I have the same experience. Because the locator has dual retention method, its retentive force is very strong. In CLASP RPD, the appropriate retentive force is 550 gram force. This is to avoid too much burden on natural teeth. Locator connected to implant. The blue one is 700 gram force, which means that implant can withstand that. But personally, I believe pink or white is too strong. I'd rather the vendor provide me two blues and one pink. Clinically, the white is piling up and I'm lacking in blue. I hope the vendor provides more blue. You cannot order just blue, you have to order in sets. So the white is piling up. It's quite strong. As you can see, this is a male patient and the patient is struggling to get it out even though it is blue. It is quite difficult. Therefore, I make a ring or notch so that the patient can use it with more ease. The retention force is quite strong. As mentioned earlier, I have the patient use the black and then moving on to blue. The pink and white continue to pile up and I wondered how I was going to address these. So I decided to use the burr on the inner surface. I had to give up dual retention because it was too strong. And I started to ponder why the design came to be. And I realized the reason as I did long-term follow-up with a patient. Where? Yes, where occurs like this. So in this case, even if you change the blue to a new one, it's insufficient. Therefore, in this case, you can use pink or white. Don't throw them all away and save a few. 
You check whether it is attached properly and do occlusal adjustment. This is the patient mouth. Recall checkup is done. At times, the patient comes in not because of the re reduced retentive force of the locator itself, but the patient maintains it the wrong way. You can see the remnants of food in here. And because it doesn't go in fully, the retentive force goes down and the patient complains at times. And we need to educate the patient of the necessity to clean it very carefully. In this patient, I just replaced it with a new one. It is very easy to put it in and take it off if you use the locator core tool. If you look at the implant overdenture loading pattern, depending on how the bite force or occlusal force is distributed, it can be divided into three. The implant overdenture, which uses two implants, we call this tissue supported system. When we place four implants, Implants are placed in the anterior and posterior area, and the tissue also takes up the force. So this is called a tissue fixture supported system. If you place a lot of implants, most of the force is delivered to the implant. So this is called a fixture supported system. Uh, doctor at Austin Implant at the first Austin consensus held in May we decided that we will no longer use the term fixture. Some countries do use it, but others don't. The ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, recommends that the term fixture should be replaced in the future with implant. If you really want to emphasize the fixture, you should say implant body. And therefore, at Austin, we decided not to use the term fixture. Okay, I will change. I've changed. I'll now say implant instead of fixture. Thank you. In the case of tissue supported system, when it functions within the mouth, the attachment needs to be able to move vertical, horizontal, and rotational movement should be allowed. In the case of locator, it allows for all those movements and therefore it should be used for tissue supported systems. In general, when you place the two implants, the mass decatory force is borne by the tissue. This is the final slide. When you place two implants for implant over denture, you cannot think of implant and attachment as one size fits all kind of a solution. When we fabricate denture, we need to stick to the basics. Just because there are two attachments, you cannot remove what should be covered. And because it is tissue supported in the lower, we all know that First, the stress bearing area is buckle shelf and retromolar pad. It needs to be covered sufficiently. And for retentive force in the lower, we need to get some support from the lingual side. At times, this is not done sufficiently and problems can occur. And therefore, because there is attachment which provides retentive force, these problems can be solved. In other words, you need to stick to basics when it comes to fabricating full denture and you can use the locator for additional retentive force. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you for listening. I'd like to express my gratitude. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. I've learned so much. Thank you. Now we will end Dr. Kim's lecture and we'll move on to real-time Q&A. Before that, live pop-up event will now proceed. Don't miss out and participate on the event by clicking on the button.
Did you participate in the event? Winners will be announced after Q&A session. Your patience will be deeply appreciated. Dr. Kim, let's look at the chat screen and look at the questions. Four, five, six, eight, five. Dr. Kim, you are full of wood. You are full of grace. IDKDD, I love your tie, Professor Cho, and I love your voice, Dr. Kim. Another person is saying they love your glasses. I changed my glasses, and maybe that's why. Amongst the questions, I do it my own way. I think this person has a very strong opinion. How can I extend the cycle of replacing locator attachments? I think the person is asking how I can use the nylon part long. When the patient puts on a denture, they should use their hands and put it in. That is ideal. However, most of patients put it in like this, especially female patients. They put it in and they bite it and they put it in and this can lead to deformation. Maybe they're not as good with their hands. The mental foramen. There's no anatomical restriction, so you can place it in a parallel way. However, clinically at times it is tilted. In those cases, we can use angled nylon male and in TS port, angled option exists. If the angulation is minimum, at times you just use the straight and this can lead to wear on one side because the insertion path is not correct. Therefore, during surgery, you need to place it as parallel as possible. We need to tell the patient to follow the path and if the patient tries to force it in, it can be a problem. You need to use your hands and you should not just force it in because it can brush other areas as it goes in. On top of my mind, I've explained this to my dad and he said he understood, but as he turned away, I saw him doing it the exact same way as he used to do. There's only so much you can do. We need to inform the patient that because you're wearing a denture, you should avoid tough food. Patients need to be aware that dentists can only do so much. The patient needs to also follow through. In order to reduce the frequency of replacement due to wear, the dentist needs to do one's best and the patient needs to also follow suit. Dentweed69 What is your most preferred attachment? If there's a little bit of ridge left, I prefer locator the most, and in severely reserved cases, I use bar attachment. It is easy to apply clip. Personally, I like the combination of bar and magnet. Bar and magnet. Bar and at the end, the magnet. Because bar provides horizontal stability and you cannot remove magnet like this. It needs to be removed like this. It doesn't fall off easily. The retentive force, if the patient moves it with his or her tongue, it should not fall off and that should be enough. These days, people use locator more than bar type and that is also the case for me as well. I've mentioned this during my lecture and the locator is the most simple in terms of clinical process and the fabrication cost is low. So if there's a bit of ridge, locator should be sufficient. 456852. If I use impression component for a locator attachment on the model for denture processing, can the lab uh, attach the processing cap on the inner surface of the denture at the same time? You've mentioned this earlier yes i've mentioned it in the lecture but i think he or she missed it slightly on the model you can attach it however in the case of tissue supported over denture i recommend attaching it with the oral cavity 
If it fits nicely, it reduces chair time. However, there are many cases where what has been delivered by the lab is not satisfactory. I have many experience. Isn't that so? Yes. One time, I placed four implants. I want to share a story where I really fell in the lurch. These days, I normally attach one at a time, but at the time, I did four all at the same time and it did not fall out. It was as if I met my nemesis. I struggled immeasurably and felt the temptation to cut the denture. And that was my experience. Next, ID Kehero. K-W-E-H-E-R-O. You've mentioned that a lot of people choose a fixed type because of maintenance issues with overdenture. If the patient has been edentulous for a long period of time and requires lip support, what kind of method do you use? In most cases, lip support has to do with the upper rather than lower. Lower does not have much of that problem. If there is horizontal resorption in the upper anterior, there are limitations in using fixed type. You can use general denture or fabricate over denture. Yes? The next question. How long will locator nylon meal be maintained? How often do we need to change it? I think this is in line with this question before. And the variation between patients are very severe, and it also depends on implant placement position and the way the patient wears it. If all conditions are the same, I think it can be retained up to one year and a half. Vendors normally recommend replacement every six months, yes. As you have mentioned, it varies depending on the patient. In most cases, I believe patients use up to a year, and they come back and say that it's loose, and as you have mentioned, we change from blue to pink. That's the general way to approach it. And that's what we do. To add, there are things that we do differently depending on the problem, so therefore you need to have an established maintenance protocol. You need to inform the patient of the cost ahead rather than asking for additional money after one or two years for repair. From the get-go, we need to tell how much the overdenture costs and how much it's going to cost in terms of maintenance. If we don't say anything, and a year later, if we ask for repair costs, the patient is going to complain in a lot of cases. You need to inform the patient of what is going to be done and what is necessary over the course of the year, and every six months thereon afterwards. If you inform these information to the patient ahead, then you'd be able to avoid much of confrontation with your patients. Next, has a talent for Roland. Are you a bear? Perhaps that's why you have a talent for rolling. In terms of maintenance of overdenture, is locator better? Is it a priority in your treatment plan? So do you think of locator attachment first? When we choose attachment, in terms of maintenance, yes. When we choose attachment, one of the consideration is how long it can be maintained. And another factor is whether it is to replace it. In the case of locator, processing cap is attached to the denture and the nylon nail, which is in charge of retentive force, is inside that. And using the first part of the locator core tool, you can remove it easily and you can use the second part to put it in easily. The replacement can be done very quickly. Therefore, in terms of maintenance, when you choose single standing type, it is first to choice. You can think of Austin TS port system. Yes. Next, 456852. What are your thoughts on implant overdenture using O-ring or ball type attachment? 
I think this person is curious in comparison with locator attachment. Before I use the locator attachment, I would use solitary type in combination with o-ring and silicone rubber ring. It's easy in its way, but the problem is the silicone rubber ring of the o-ring tears easily. It's easy to replace, however, it's cumbersome because it is too short. Next, I used a Dalbo attachment. It's not silicone. The metal cap provided retentive force, however, it was too expensive. If I have it, I would use it, but if I were to choose, I would choose locator. Understood? Next, D101301. In doing full denture in the upper with locator attachment, if I do not cover the palatal side and make it like the lower, will the retentive force go down significantly? Can I do open palate denture? I would advise against it. When I learned, the bone quality of the upper is weak and when we place the implant because of bone resorption pattern, labioversion occurs. If I place the four single implants here and if the occlusal force is 100, the force is not distributed by 25 each and is concentrated to the weakest one leading to implant failure. And therefore, in the upper, I prefer to use the bar type which connects all four. That's how I learned. Then, in order to effectively disperse the occlusal force, we need to cover the palate. And there are different types of the palate. The people with deep palatal vault, we can use AP palatal strap type. And if it is a flat, there is no horizontal stability. So if possible, you need to cover the palate to disperse the occlusal force. In the upper, palate is where it occurs most efficiently. If you punch it out just because the patient complains of discomfort, you don't know what's going to happen. Therefore, I recommend covering it. Understood, ID Yonjishi, upper edentulist patient. The patient is male with developed masticatory muscle and the patient has in the lower up to number 33 to 42 and in the middle there's torus. At this time, instead of locator on 12, 14, 22 and 24, what if I do eight unit bridge and RPD and full palatal strap with a hole or should I just make magnetic attachment in the center? I would like to hear your opinion. Full palatal strap and a hole. Magnetic attachment in the center. I think this person is trying to describe that in the lower there's number 33 to 42 and the plan is to use RPD. Yes. Placing four implants. It looks like implant supported RPD up to number four, making a survey crown and creating RPD. Towards the palatal, the person is suggesting AP palatal strap. The what is magnetic attachment in the center? I think this holds no meaning. This is about making eight unit bridge and survey crown and RPD, and this is a very nice question. I don't want you to think about magnetic attachment. It is position 2424. If the arch is V shape, when we make eight unit bridge, posterior span becomes a short, and therefore it is okay to use AP palatal strap. In the case of U shape, everything is in the anterior side, so the posterior side becomes longer. In order to disperse the occlusal force, you need to cover the palatal side long term. Full coverage is good long term. ID ammonite, blue, pink, white, red, green. What is the difference? It is the retentive force. Green. Green and red. In locator, it is angled male. In locator attachment, there's only straight to top. 
Up to 40 degrees can be corrected using angled nylon meal. I mentioned that there's dual retention. The difference is that there's no inside mechanism. Here, oh, I see. In Austin TS port, there is angled port. Yes, angled port. However, please, you want us to place it straight. Yes, that is the way to go. Next, Dentweed69. How do you do relining? It's another good question. There are two ways. You can do chair side relining and lap side relining. When you use rebase resin and do relining at chair side, you need to remove a bit of denture base and then attach it. This is very important. However, as you attach it, at times you face trouble, and with time, it falls apart. Personally, I prefer lap side relining rebasing. However, the problem is the patient needs to live on a certain period without denture. If the patient can leave the denture behind, I take impression and send it to the lab. If the patient had come in without giving it much of a thought, as a way of taking functional impression, I use a soft liner tissue compression for relining and I ask the patient to come back when that patient is available and I take that for lap side relining. I think the intention of the question was when we do relining of the locator, how do we process it? To do it thoroughly, I remove everything because it can be removed. And then after I do relining, I make space and do attachment again. Understood. That is the best way. ID awesome. When we attach it, the male part comes off the denture. How long do you wait for it to harden? About eight minutes. Understood. I think it may vary depending on the material and by vendor. You need to look at the instructions well. There are so many questions. Yes, we have a lot of questions today. Yes, older patients don't really listen. Awesome. As we attach the prosthesis, if the patient bites wrong, tilting occurs. What do you do during the hardening period? I've mentioned earlier that if possible, you need to hold it for over five minutes with your hand. But that can be quite cumbersome, so people have the patient bite. And this can lead to tilting and reduce the biocompatibility. If you find it imperative, you can have the patient bite on the cotton roll. That's a good way. You don't know what the patient is going to do, so I'm quite concerned. The best way is for you to hold it down. Yes, dentist or hygienist should press upon it. Dead net. Professor, you're awesome. Yeonji Shi, if the lower is natural teeth and if denture is necessary due to severe bone loss in the upper, can I use locator instead of hybrid or burr? How many should I place and what kind of precautions should I need to take? As mentioned, in the case of upper, if possible, I don't use locator single standing. If you have to use it, you should place four instead of two. If you place two, I have experienced a lot of failures in the lower. So if you're to place it in the upper, you need to place more than four. I think this person means bar, not burr. What are the precautions in using locator instead of hybrid or bar? At least you need to place four implants. If possible, labioversion of the implant path should be avoided. You need to be careful when you place it. We mostly use black nylon male for the patients. Using blue can be too much, so I think it would be a good idea to use black if you really need to do it. So starting off with the one with weaker retentive force. Thank you for wonderful lecture, professors. I think that's the end of the questions for today. ID, which dental clinic should I go? I really love the live program today. I think this person really enjoyed your lecture, Dr. Kim. Thank you so much. Dr. Kim, thank you for your response.
It's late and Friday night. Do you have any word of advice towards your peers who are watching our program? I'm not sure it's my place to give advices, but when I first learned that there were not that many education programs, most of the training programs were offline and there were a lot of limitations in regards with time and location and the lecture cost was quite expensive. The ultimate goal of clinician is to provide the best prosthesis and for it to last long without major issues. To do that, you need experience, and experience requires time. In order to have all sorts of experience, it is too difficult. I've always hoped for better training programs, and now Austin is providing various training online and offline. There are different training platforms available. Please refer to these training programs and utilize these indirect experiences and then you'll be able to apply these to your clinical practice much quicker. Thank you for saying a good word for Denal and we will continue to strive to provide a better learning material and learning programs. So many people have participated in our live chat today and I would like to express my gratitude. Now we will move on to checking out the winners of live pop-up event. Hold your breath. Congratulations to all the winners. You'll be able to check whether you've won on Denal's site right now and your prizes will be sent via text after the program ends. Once again, congratulations. I hope you continue to show a lot of interest to Denal and I hope you listen in on our lectures. Dr. Kim, despite cold weather, thank you for coming all the way to Magok and providing a wonderful lecture for Prosthodontics on Friday today. Thank you. Dear viewers of Prosthodontics on Friday, how did you like the lecture with Dr. Kim Se-ung? Clinical application of implant over denture using locator attachments. I hope you've got many meaningful tips. For the questions that were not answered during the program, we will reply them in detail via replies. In December, we will invite the Professor Ho jung Bo of Busan University and listen to his lecture on how to solve difficult cases using implant bar attachment. Thank you for being with us up until so late. Thank you.